So tonight, uh, we're here for the Town of Penfield Parks and Rec Master Plan Update Community Input Session. Um, included in our master plan, which is everything we do with Parks and Recreation, we have a presentation on a new rec center study done by um, Plan Architecture to my right. Uh, and then we also have a, a Shadow Pines mountain bike project by Further Trail Services uh, that will be later. Um, so all of this stuff and presentations uh, falls under our Parks and Rec master plan. Um, I can't stress enough that tonight is all data. We're gathering input from the community. It's not, none of these plans are going into fruition right away. Certainly this input session is going to update those things. Um, when we look at the rec center, a lot of it is going to be input for the future. Um, this isn't anything that's going to be going to the board. Nothing's going to be approved, uh, which is honestly a nice thing for our master plan, um, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, so to introduce our Parks and Rec Master Plan Update Committee, uh, I'm Andrew Orkvitz, the chair of the committee. I'm the Recreation Department Director. Um, lived in Penfield my entire life. Uh, love the town, love working for the town, and very happy to say we have a wonderful recreation and parks team as well as town staff. So it's really just a pleasure working for the town of Penfield and for residents and community members like you all. So thank you so much for being here. Um, more committee members, we have Pam Gerace, who's our Town of Penfield Senior Rec Supervisor. Pam is here tonight. We have Sabrina Renner, who's a Recreation Supervisor for the Town of Penfield here tonight. Tim Masterton, our Parks Foreman, who is here in the back. Thank you so much, Tim. We've got Linda Cole, so previous town board for many, many, many years. I won't say how many years, uh, but now resident, retired. Thank you so much for being a part of this and staying on with the Master Plan Committee. Uh, Linda Tuglish, who's a new town board member, is here tonight as well. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Don Horler, who uh, he has the most amount of information up here as he is on our master plan committee update. He is on our parks and rec advisory board and trails committee. So as the rec director, I'd like to say that Don actually knows more about what's happening in the town than I do. So all the questions can go to him. But Don is here. Thank you so much for, for all that you do. Uh, Jim Stanford is not here tonight. We do have John Schmelk, who is here this evening. John. Oh, perfect. Right in front. Uh, we've got Niraj is not here tonight. I don't believe I saw him. Alex DeBell is not here or Willie Tomsky. So uh, a great group of people, um, parts of recreation staff, uh, recreation boards that at our last master plan, which is 2019, we did not have um, a rec advisory board at that part. Uh, we also didn't have a trails committee member. So it's nice to have more members on this committee for more input and, and, uh, and our residents as well for those, for those input sessions. Um, so I, I did want to start off just with just a general um, people being here tonight might be familiar with Parks and Recreation in Penfield. They might not be. But really, I just wanted to go over all the different ways that you can connect with the Town of Penfield Parks and Recreation Department. Um, the biggest thing, regardless of whether we're doing a master plan, uh, which is every five years or not, uh, we have email, we have phone, we're here in the, in the community center. We, we want that input all the time. Of course, it's always wonderful at our master plans to look kind of what's happening in the next five to 10 years and, and get that scope. But ultimately, we want to hear from people every day. What programs can we do better? Uh, what things can we improve? Um, it's not always going to be a yes, but certainly we want to look at those things uh, and really just make uh, our department the best it can be for the community. Um, so our main office hours here are 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, where we have the most amount of full-time rec staff here. Uh, our hours for recreation is 8.30 to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's something that we've expanded on just since 2023 in the spring. We've expanded our hours where we do have recreation staff here in the office uh, that are part-time workers that are here to assist anybody with questions, registrations, lodges, things like that recognize that that's new. Um, so if you do have questions, it used to be only Monday through Friday from nine to five. Now you can reach out at night and on weekends and somebody's here dedicated to answer those. So we're, we're happy to be offering that now. Our phone number and email is up there. Uh, again, I can't stress enough. Uh, it's easy to say recreation at penfield.org. 
any questions, comments, whether it's master plan, anything, send it to that email uh, and we distribute it through our department, but we wanna hear that feedback from you guys. So that's the best email uh, for anything that you have tonight. Uh, send it that way and we'll distribute it as best as possible. Uh, our website is penfieldrec.org. You can register for programs, reserve facilities for our lodgers and open shelters. Uh, we have calendars of programs and events and everything that we do um, here within the rec department in the town. We have an e-news that goes out uh, monthly. Uh, when we're really busy, it goes out twice a month sometimes. I know Sabrina's over here, and it might even be three or four times a month. Uh, so if you want to stay connected with REC, get on that e-news. E uh, we also have a Town of Penfield Facebook account and Penfield REC specific account. So go on there, share that stuff, like that stuff, so you can see what's going on. And then finally, the Town of Penfield website, penfield.org. And specific to the master plans, um, the last three master plans are available to be searched on the town website. You just search uh, Recreation Parks Master Plan and all that stuff will come up. So thank you to PCTV is here. Uh, they do all of our website stuff. Uh, so looking uh, really just at a general of our master plan, and I, I took this paragraph from our last master plan, and uh, I'm going to try not to read everything word for word on this PowerPoint, but this is one that I think is important that kind of encompasses what we're trying to do with our master plan. The Town of Penfield's Park and Recreation Master Plan update is intended to help meet the needs of current and future residents by positioning Penfield to build on the community's unique parks and recreation assets and identify new opportunities. The citizen-driven master plan establishes a clear direction to guide staff, committees, and elected officials in their efforts to enhance the community parks and recreation programs, services, and facilities. Ultimately, it, it's nice every five years we get to update and really look at what we're doing in the future. We do it on a seasonally basis from the rec department, but it's always nice every five years to make sure that we're trying to go out to the community and get as much input as possible. So again, this starts tonight with our first community input session. So again, thank you everyone who is here, uh, who hopefully will provide that input. Um, but this is gonna be an ongoing process. It's not just tonight, we have a whole whole nother uh, month worth of gathering data and opportunities with more sessions and uh, online surveys. Uh, and again, it's updated every five years. Uh, so previous master plans were done using COTS and Associates. Um, this was a professional group that we had come in, do our recreation master plans for many, many years. Uh, I don't want to say how many years, but uh, predating the 80s is I'll leave it at that. So many, many master plans done uh, by professional consultants. Um, starting in 2012, our master plan was started to do just from our, commun uh, fr from our committee. Uh, within the town, which save taxpayer funds. Um, certainly I do think uh, when we're looking the 2012 compared to the previous ones, it definitely had more of a community feel to it. We tried to get more community input. So we've really just grown and grown uh, now being here at the 2024 master plan to try and get as much community input as possible. Uh, 2019 is the one thing that I want to mention. Uh, the biggest thing that came out of that was uh, the committee identified four dimensions of parks and recreation. Um, recreation and parks, as we all know, is a huge, large, encompassing, uh, really, dimension of the town. Um, so to identify it within four things is impossible. Uh, but we really think these are the four large pillars of what makes our master plan when we were trying to focus on kind of looking toward the next five years. Um, so it looks to just the people. What's, what's the community looking like? Uh, you know, who are they? What are they? What are the numbers? Things like that. Uh, Penfield Parks, Properties and Trails. What are we offering in those services? What have we improved? What have we gotten rid of? Things like that. Uh, Penfield Recreation Programs, which is a whole huge thing within itself just to talk about, you know, what rec programs are out there and what, how to categorize that. Uh, and then lastly, our Penfield Recreation Indoor Facilities. So looking at dimension one with Penfield people, when we're looking at this master plan update, uh, the things that our committee is looking at is we're just looking at population trends, things, information that we can get from the census, um, information on demographics, varieties of needs, support and assistance. A lot of the stuff that's gonna be from the people other than from the census, which is just saying, hey, this is the data that's out there, 
is really what this community input session is for. What are your needs? What are things that you need supported for? What are programs you're looking for? Things like that through the community. So uh, the Penfield people is very general, but it's very large, but it starts really with our community and them providing the input to us. Uh, so here tonight, our Recreation Master Plan Committee, uh, where we do have forms located up at the front when we have our breakout sessions, uh, we're going to have a bunch of questions up there that uh, some of them relate directly to these different dimensions. And the question that we have that's directly related to the Penfield people is, uh, how can communications from the Parks and Rec Department to the public be improved? Uh, it's certainly something that we look and think about every day at Penfield Recreation, and I'm sure many businesses and towns. How can we get what we do out to the community uh, as much as possible so people know what our services are? And then if our services don't match what people want, how can they reach back out to us and provide that information to help steer us? Because it's crazy to say in the recreation world, we want to do more work. Uh, we want to hear about new programs. We want to create new programs. So uh, not that other professions aren't that way, but uh, it does seem like we're always trying to, to do more. Uh, so please provide that information. And again, uh, you'll have the opportunity at the end. All of these questions will be on the sheet, but just wanted to mention when we were talking about each dimension. So our next dimension that we're looking at is Penfield Parks properties and trails. When we're looking at this from an update perspective, a lot of it is, you know, really what's our inventory of what we're offering. We didn't focus too much on the trails uh, at our last master plan, and that's a focus that this master plan committee has really looked at. You know, what's the connectivity? You know, what are our trails that we have out there? What types of trails are out there? Uh, when we look at some of the things I wanted to highlight up here is we've got three new rectangle fields at Rothfuss Park that are going to be starting this April uh, that obviously weren't there at our last recreation master plan. Um, when we did the master plan in 2019, um, the Shadow Pines property was still evolving. It still had meetings going on. It still had a committee looking at it. So ultimately, really what we put in there was we're going to do what that committee says to do. Now that we have all that information, we're gonna take that and update here uh, with what has happened and what future plans are. And I know one of the projects tonight that we'll be talking about is one of those specific projects from that. Um, and then lastly, one of the big things that we've looked at that I, I kind of touched on before is, uh, again, now having Don, a trails committee member uh, and a parks and rec advisory board member, is you know our trail system in the town of Penfield. I'd, I'd love to say that we have Tons of trails for people to offer, but um, a lot of those are standalone trails. Uh, you go to a park, you can do a loop, which is wonderful. Um, and if that's what you'd like to do, that's great. But if you'd like to do more, how do we connect those different trails? How do we connect parks? Um, whether that's direct trail systems, whether that's um, sidewalks, things like that, just looking into those options, not getting into too many specifics, but um, really just looking at the trail system as a whole and, and giving general thoughts and ideas about that. And, and one thing that I put in parentheses up there that uh, I really think is important is multi-use trails. Um, is it just hiking trails? Is it just walkers? Is it just joggers? Is it people with strollers? Uh, is it bikers? You know, is it that sort of thing that we really need to look at? Are we offering our trail system and parks to as many people in the community as possible? Uh, so I really think that's going to be a, a thing that obviously we touch on with one of our mountain bike projects tonight. Uh, but really that encompasses all of our town parks, not just Shadow Pines in this specific project. Uh, so we had a couple questions uh, with this specific dimension, and it's which Penfield parks and trails do you frequent and what activities do you enjoy there? How can Penfield's parks and trails be improved? And do you feel safe in Penfield parks, trails, and properties? If not, what can be improved? Again, this is on a sheet that you can fill out later. So moving to our third dimension, uh, Penfield Recreation Programs. Uh, as the Recreation Director, um, this is a really, really vast program where we could get a million different new programs uh, and ideas, and for us to try to categorize them into specific things is really difficult, but uh, a challenge that we want. We want as many programs as possible. Uh, so we're really going to look at what's the program data that we've had for the last five years. Where is that steering us in the future? Again, something the rec department does on a seasonal basis. Uh, our rec staff does an amazing job, and I can't thank them enough, um, especially when you look at our numbers when it comes to programs we offer on a yearly basis and how many programs of those are canceled. Uh, 
I believe it's in the high 80s to 90% that our programs run. So that only speaks to our, our staff offering what the community wants uh, in whatever facilities that we can. Uh, so having some of our rec staff here, thank you so much for all that you do. Um, so besides rec, rec program data, you know, it's offerings, cancellations, it's revenue and expense as well, looking at how are we doing it, for what funds, you know, are we doing it uh, appropriately? We do typically have standard agreements with our instructors, but uh, how are we saving money for the community and or spending it on good services? And then again, interests in planning for future program, uh, which happens every season. Uh, our question for this dimension is, which recreation programs do you use and how can they be improved? So again, just to touch on some of our categories, uh, I certainly can't put them all up here, uh, but really our rec department programming is all ages. Uh, we have wonderful wide variety of programs for youth, adult, senior, uh, and then just to name some of them, uh, those are our categories that are our main ones in our seasonal brochure that comes out three times a year. Um, but obviously new ones grow all the time and we try to expand upon that. So for our last dimension, which is Penfield Recreation Indoor Facilities, um, we are here at our Penfield Community Center, which houses the Penfield Rec Department, the library, and town courts. Um, and one of the main focuses from previous master plans was looking at a new facility. Uh, what are the options? What would that look like? And in previous master plans, it was wonderful to have a, a description there that said, the community needs a new center or would be interested in looking at that center. And, and one thing that I'm really thankful for for, for town board uh, is uh, instead of us having a professional, professional consultant do our master plan, uh, they looked at and they got a professional architect consultant to come in and do a rec center study, um, which are here presenting after this tonight and can't thank them enough for working with them and all that they did. Uh, but again, this plan is to gather data for this master plan of what it could look like. What would be those options in there? So when you're looking at the presentation that comes out tonight, please remember always in the back of your head is this is not what it's going to look like. This is just very general and what we've started to come up with based on previous master plans, rec department staff input, instructor inputs. Uh, but it's really just our starting point. And, and one thing I think is really nice about having this be a part of our master plan is it's gonna add so much more detail that if and when this ever does come to fruition, uh, we're already a couple steps ahead of the planning process by starting conversations like these. So in no way uh, is the rec center going to be new? Or are we removing the library or anything like that? It's purely for data only. And we're very thankful just to be looking at it in general. Um, and Again, it was plan architects that are here tonight that are presenting next. And we do have a couple questions of what amenities, facilities, and services do you expect in a recreation center? And what location do you feel would be best for a new recreation center? We have multiple places in town that we've looked at just as, again, very general open spaces that could fit a rec center. In no way is this is where it's going. This is the input that we're looking for in the future, just to say, hey, this is a part of our master plan, and this is data that we found. Um, for the ones that you see up there that are listed, Harris Whalen Park, Rawfus Park, Shadow Pines, Veterans Memorial Park, those are all town-owned options. We thought that that would probably be the best to start with and name, because those are obviously pieces of property that we already own. Um, but certainly, are, if there are other places in town that people are aware of for space for a large facility like that, we'd love to hear it. Uh, and, and again, this is just great data to be able to put into a master plan. Um, I did before the next presentation about the, the new rec center study, I just wanted to put some info uh, in everybody's head before you watch that. Um, because that one's going to be mainly focused on what a new rec center would look like. Uh, we're very happy as, as a rec department programming where we are now. We'll program anywhere. Uh, we utilize our lodges, our parks, uh, our current facility. Uh, we try to have as many partnerships, sponsorships, things like that where we can use um, outside resources, outside venues, places like that uh, for all of our rec 
uh, program. So again, thank you to our rec staff for all that they do. It shows in the numbers that we have for program enrollments and, and revenue. Um, but this specific building was constructed in 1953. Uh, it was an elementary school uh, for the school district. We hear sometimes when people come in, oh, this used to be my first grade classroom and things like that, which is really cool to hear. Uh, it's great to know that buildings like that at that time were built to last. Um, and in 1985, it was remodeled uh, into this facility. Uh, the total square footage of the community center is around 43,000 square feet. Uh, our library occupies around 28,000, and our court is around 4,500. Uh, that leaves uh, the recreation space around 11,000 with uh, 8,000 programming space. So just in in terms of looking at that, I just wanted to throw that out there just to say, hey, if you think of our community center, this is how it's divided up. Uh, when you start to look at other community centers out there and what they're offering in terms of what their square footage is, um, 8,000 square feet of programming is not close to what they offer. So again, it's pieces of data that's out there. Uh, I wanted to provide that just to give a nice reference for when you're looking at the numbers that the new center uh, study provides, you can put that into a context compared to where we are now. Uh, and we try to think of, you know, if we're offering X amount of programs at 8,000 square feet, what can we do with 30 or 40 or 50 or 60? I'll keep the number going higher since we're getting input as much as possible. Um, and just to kind of break down uh, the community uh, center in terms of the rec space, uh, the community room that we're in now is around 2,500 square feet. We have the gymnasium at 3,700 square feet, conference room, which is just under 500 square feet, senior lounge, and stage. And then we have kitchens for programs. So again, that's listing one, two, three, four, really four rooms where we can do programming. Four rooms in this rec department that we do rec programs out of. I will leave this alone by saying thank you rec staff for all the programs that you fit into this building. Um, uh, but when we're looking at a new center, it's not to say that we can't program out of this building. We, we can, but I really think the exciting thing for the rec department and really the community should be, what can we program in a bigger building or a different building? Uh, and that's the stuff that excites us every day. And really, that's the input that we want uh, from the community to say, this is what makes sense, this is what we're looking for. Uh, and it's nice to be able to say that through the master plan, it's all data, uh, and there's not gonna be a lot of money and numbers attached to it at this point. Uh, so please, you know, your wish list, your wants list, this is what we wanna hear. Um, so we're excited for the future, no matter what comes. I know our rec department and our staff is ready for it. So next steps, we've got two more presentations. Uh, the next one will be a rec center study by Plan Architects, and then we've got Shadow Pines Mountain Bike Project from Further Trail Services. After that, we are going to have at three separate tables breakout sessions, where if you have specific stuff you wanna ask to each of the presenters, you can. You can certainly visit all of them and gather as much information as possible. We'll try and stay as late as it takes to get as much information as possible. Um, for February, for our 2024 Parks and Rec Master Plan Community Input Survey, we're going to have all of the input that you guys provide tonight on our sheets of paper and stuff that comes in email in the next coming days. We're going to have a SurveyMonkey online survey that's going to be sent and put on our town website and through our social media that we're going to gather your community input. So it's not just tonight that we're asking for all of this stuff. You're going to have further opportunities, um, and I believe we have about seven or eight questions on our our survey tonight, we'll expand that to about 20 to 30 um, for that online survey, which is similar to our last master plan. Uh, but certainly we're looking to update the questions based on what you provide tonight. Um, our master plan updates cannot happen without high levels of community engagement input. I can't stress that enough. Uh, we're going to have a second community session uh, later this month, February 24th. It's a Saturday from 12 to 2. It will be similar to the presentations that we have tonight, uh, but certainly I think, uh, I don't want to speak for each group, but we'll obviously have more information from input provided from you. Uh, but from our rec center study, we'll also have a little bit more detail when it comes to some of the financials and, and things like that that we're waiting to get back from some of the other uh, groups we're working with. 
And then again, I want I know I put this in a slide earlier, but uh, we want to hear everything uh, and we want to have as much interaction as possible. We've got our phone number, our email, our website, e news, rec department, Facebook, and our website. So reach out, stop into the rec center. Um, you can identify Andrew, come and ask for me, and I'll, I'll, I'll make time to come and sit and talk to you. But, uh, but really, we're, we're looking for as much input as possible, and it can't, uh, it can't be too much when it comes to the master plan. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, we'll set up the next presentation. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves for a little bit, and uh, we'll get the next presentation going in the next couple minutes. Thank you so much. My name is Chris Lopez, and I'm here with Cortland Knopp. We're with Plan Architectural Studio, and as Andrew mentioned, we're working on a uh, study for the Recreation Center. Um, I'm going to give a brief kind of introduction to where we are in the study. Um, we really encourage you to afterwards come and talk to us. We're looking for input, as Andrew mentioned. Um, I'm going to do a kind of a high level of where we are with the study. I'm going to be talking, kind of reading from a script to try to stay on time here and Cortland's going to be doing the clicking, so I'll be talking, you'll, you'll be clicking. So Cortland's going to be going kind of back and forth, I think, on this, depending on where the, uh, where the presentation goes. But thanks again for, for coming, and we're looking forward to talking to you after this. Um, over the last couple of years, our studio has been assisting the town with various uh, potential municipal building project studies. Um, through these studies, our goal is to address the town's needs through potential renovations, additions, and in this case, a new building. Uh, in the summer of 2022, we were asked to perform a study for a new community recreation center. This study was put on hold um, by the town board, and as of this winter, um, it has been reinitiated. It's anticipated the study will be completed in early 2024. As Andrew mentioned, this is kind of fortunate because now we can fold the study into the master planning process, which we wouldn't have if we had finished it in 2022. So it's kind of actually a fortunate situation. Um, and it also allows us to do that deeper dive study to be folded into the higher level master plan. Um, so working closely with, the rec uh, with, with Andrew and the Recreation Department, um, and based on program information provided by the department, Initial concept was developed to be potentially located at the north end of the town hall site, otherwise known as Veterans Memorial Park, on an open soccer field area near the Dolmite Lodge. As Andrew mentioned, this was just used as a study area. We'll talk about, we can talk about other sites, but it's really just for the sake of study. The focus of the study is, develop, is uh, to develop a concept to meet the current and future space needs for the recreation and community programs and to better serve the public. The concept includes a dividable gym to accommodate basketball, volleyball, and four pickle courts, pickleball courts, uh, an elevated walking running track, which is approximately one-ninth of a mile, a senior center, a fitness and dance studio, six flexible and dividable multi-purpose meeting rooms, a community kitchen with cafe and nutritional education demonstration area, a central common space, staff offices, equipment storage, and um, that's pretty much the general program. In addition to the building program, some of the exterior spaces being considered are a canopy covered outdoor space that would face east towards the fields and the woods, and a south facing roof terrace that would provide space for gathering various activities and potentially include raised planting beds. The site work would include site utilities and site lighting, access drives and parking lot that would be integrated with the existing drives and parking of, of that part of the site a main entry drop-off zone, a food pantry uh, pickup area, a loading area for equipment, and exterior seating areas integrated with the existing fields and trails. Uh, we believe that this new community rec center uh, should not only encourage people to be active inside the building, but should also inspire people to recreate outdoors. Um, the nature principle uh, philosophy that was developed by an author, Richard Louvre, is based on the idea that a connection to nature, to the natural world, is a fundamental in human health and well-being. 
So that's kind of part of the principle here. Uh, in such that we feel this new community center should be connected to its natural surroundings. Um, this can be achieved with siting the building um, in a manner uh, that considers factors like prevailing winds, the sun's path, screening of parking lots, and, uh, and other uh, ideas. Another approach is to strategically locate windows that allow natural light in, provide views out um, to the adjacent fields and forest, and also by providing covered exterior spaces that can accommodate outdoor programming and outdoor activities. Whether an individual or group plans to recreate or meet indoors or outdoors, this facility can function as a common area to springboard and initiate various other activities. Um, our site diagram shows how nature principle could be cultivated by designing by, for views and integrated trail connections. Another philosophy that we're looking at is the blue zone philosophy. Um, we also believe there's an enormous opportunity for such a building to support activities and programming that can bolster community health and longevity. We've developed a color-coded diagram that indicates how the community rec center could align with the primary tenets of the blue zone philosophy. Uh, this philosophy uh, developed by Dan Butner, who's a National Geographic fellow, is based upon research of regions around the world where cent centenarians have lived long, healthy, and fulfilling lives. The basic four tenets or pillars of the Blue Zones are connection, social activities that encourage community to interact um, and engage on, with multiple generations, two, movement, physical activities, especially those that provide natural movement, uh, nutrition, promoting opportunities to expose uh, folks to nutritional awareness, and outlook, education activities, opportunities that promote a sense of purpose and a reduction of stress. Lastly, we also uh, envision incorporating um, potential sustainable design elements into the building um, that would include but not completely um, be held to uh, a geothermal HVAC system a solar array system, and increased thermal insulation for the building. Um, lastly, I'm going to go through some just basic stats of the building. We can, again, we can talk more details at the table. But basis, basic statistics for the study um, is, I mentioned, located um, at 3100 Atlantic Avenue, so the north end of that site at, uh, at the Veterans Memorial Park. Um, the size that we're looking at right now is approximately a two-story building in the 45,000 square foot range, in that range. You mentioned <laughs> it could be. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty good context, 8,000, 45,000, yeah. Um, at a high level pre-construction manager cost projection, this was done in February of 2023. The total project cost was looking at around 21 to $25 million. Um, we, part of our study is to incorporate a um, construction manager, LaChase Construction will be working with us to give us a more detailed construction cost. Um, as everybody knows, construction costs have been pretty wild in the last, especially the last four or five years. So we're working with our professional to do a deeper dive and, and give as accurate as we can as far as cost projections go. So that will be coming in the next few sessions. We'll have more of that information. Um, it should be noted that this is very high level. As I mentioned, um, the cost could be higher. It, it could be, this could be accurate. Um, in February and March, our team will be working with the CM. And as, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll be coming back to you and, and giving some updates on that. The current study has been developed through programming and concept design phase. Our studio is now developing, as Andrew mentioned, um, some computer massing models to advance the architecture. Once the architecture is advanced um, and we meet with our construction manager, we'll be able to provide more detail. Um, Cortland's going to run through just some, some of the kind of, these are really just sketches at this point. They're really bubble diagram, but it just kind of gives you the idea of the scale and the potential massing of, of the concept at this point. Um, so Cortland, I guess this is from the, from the entry, from the west side, exterior. Um, West side. Uh, this would be the main entrance of the building. Um, there's two kind of masses going on. This is more of the uh, the um, kitchen area, 
and then the two-story portion would be the elevated track and the gymnasium and then um, this is smaller space which would be the uh, uh, meeting rooms um, on the two different levels this is a view um, from the east looking west um, and then so the the existing fields to the right with the covered area um, and then this mass is the gymnasium portion and then this is the elevated track that looks down into the lobby space this is a view inside that lobby space when you come inside uh, the the main entrance the rec department offices to the right this is the uh, demonstration kitchen area in the dining um, which we would envision be opened up to the lobby area. We're, we're kind of envisioning this as a, a an airport lounge style. Um, and we've talked about it as like the, the living room for Penfield. Um, and so this would also be a multimedia area where you could have presentations uh, and a multimedia wall. And then you can see the elevated track above. This is a view uh, looking the other way. So you see the main entrance. You can also see into the gym and then outside to that covered area that looks out to the, the sports fields. This view is when you come up the stairs from the main entry, you can see the elevated track. This also looks down to the main lobby space. And then it looks out to the roof terrace area and there would be potentially picnic tables and, and some um, elevated um, garden boxes. A view inside the gymnasium. Um, you can see we're envisioning it being able to be split in half, two pickleball courts on either side, and then a full court gym that could be divided into two half courts. And then a view looking down from the elevated track. And then I think that's it. So again, these are just, in our world, these are kind of rough sketches at this point. We're developing this to a much more detailed um, level currently in the office, and we're excited to share those kind of details when we get into materials and things like that. Um, we really look forward to uh, your feedback and input tonight, um, and um, uh, we look forward to having conversations with you about what, what your visions are. So thanks a lot. All right, so again, um, thank you so much, uh, Cortland and Chris, for all the information you provided. I can't stress enough, again, everything that you just saw is wonderful concepts, but in no way does that mean, is that what it's going to be? Things can be included to say, we'd like this to be added, we'd like to be this take, taken away, and that's the, uh, the great thing about this being part of the master plan, is we can add all of that stuff to the master plan, uh, which is going to help shape what we do in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So again, just what you saw, which is wonderful information to take us kind of some steps forward just to see what a general idea of what it could look like. Uh, but certainly it doesn't mean that we still don't want information to say, hey, we'd love a, a pool attached to that. Or um, one of the things we say here at the community center is we love the, the connection we have with the library. Uh, it's wonderful to have those sort of services that are similar services in the same building. Um, does it mean that the next building has to be both of us together? No, I mean, that depends on a lot of different things, but uh, that's the input that we want to hear. We like that, but uh, with costs and things that you saw just for a rec center, uh, since we're only focused on a rec center uh, for this study, it doesn't mean that we don't want to be part of the, the library, but uh, we just wanted to focus on that side of it. Uh, but certainly knowing that if a library came with us, you got to think those costs that you just saw there would be uh, skyrocketed because that's even more space when you look at you know the 8,000 square feet that we have now and the 24,000 square feet that they have so again just great things for us to include into this master plan to think about and, and, and it really starts and ends with with the community giving us our input so uh, again thank you so much for being here uh, give us a couple minutes uh, so we can start the Shadow Pines mountain bike project and uh, we'll go from there thank you Everybody ready? Great, can you hear me okay in the back? Everybody good? All right, awesome, thank you. 
was a great turnout. Thanks for everybody's time and interest tonight. Um, I'm here. My name is Adam Wrights from Further Trail Services. I'm here to talk about the Shadow Pines Mountain Biking Trail Project. Um, BME Associates had done prior planning work and had included mountain biking as a recommendation and this, this planning process is essentially a piggyback and extension of that prior master planning process to evaluate the possibilities for mountain biking inclusion. So further um, helps facilitate the development of community focused and destination worthy trails and sometimes hopefully for everyone here that's the same thing right? Um, further trail services, we work for the conservation and enjoyment of natural resources through the sustainable development of trail-based recreation that enriches lives. So we focus on the people and what the experiences that they're looking for are, and trails should be rewarding and enjoyable. Um, background, I have a background in local advocacy. I was a former consultant and contractor with the International Mountain Bicycling Association. Um, six years of professional experience. Um, now going on seven trail projects in 10 different states and further was really created as a local capacity builder. So the, the goal is to bring professional experience and professional capacity for mechanized construction, working with the grassroots organizations and locals uh, in the area in order to help increase the capacity for local trail development. So we're trying to increase the number and the diversity of the trail experiences that are offered. So project understanding. So the town of Penfield seeks to develop a written plan and graphical maps depicting the potential for natural surface trails at Shadow Pines. Uh, the, the resulting plan, it's going to formalize the visions and goals. Uh, it's going to communicate the community's needs and the benefits to that community. It's going to illustrate the project potential. It's going to allow for informed decision making you know, like phase implementation and, and the budgets, uh, cost estimates will help make, what, make decisions for what's achievable. Um, and then it's going to support approvals and fundraising for those recommendations. So a little bit of trail theory. So why trails? Well, the community here, um, how many mountain bikers or off-road cyclists in the, in the room tonight? So great turnout. Yeah, awesome. Um, so in the master plan, like I said, there was a recommendation for its inclusion. Uh, benefits in general, um, trails are very cost effective when you look at other costs for other uh, facilities. The, they're great land management strategies. They, ha they can um, conserve open space for low impact development like trail and experiences, which are experience rich and um, you know, it supports a variety of diverse users. A lot of the recommendations for this plan are going to be shared use. So they're not only going to be mountain bike trails, but they're going to be great for hiking, walking, dog walking, nature enjoyment, that sort of stuff. Um, and it's, there's a multitude of health and wellness benefits. It promotes economic vitality for the community. And it just overall strengthens the communities by making it a um, more vibrant, attractive place for people to live and recreate. So what do users want in general? Users are looking for experiences. Um, so some people are looking for challenge. Some people are looking for a sense of escape. Some people are looking for play. Um, anybody who likes playing in the back maybe? <laughs> Got a couple guys back there. Some people are looking for risk, right? <laughs> so you got a lot of different users, even within mountain bikers. You got a lot of different people that want different things out of it. And so those diverse objectives um, promote the need for trail diversity. Um, so experience-based design seeks to identify the different reasons why people are drawn to trails and then support their experience objectives with trails that fit their needs and preferences. So, you know, that's a short list of things that people are looking for. On the boards over there, you'll notice there's some pens and we're going to be looking for your input as we go through the evening. There's a, an abstract about the project. There's um, previous master planning recommendations that are included in the current plan as they result, uh, as they relate to uh, trail development. And then there's also some, some excerpts from previous public input. So we're looking to, to affirm those ideas from the master planning process and then get some more data via these boards. And then there's an online survey, a survey that we'll make available after tonight's session for the people here tonight and then the people that couldn't be here. Um, 
So going back to this, a lot of different reasons why people choose trails. Um, they're a wonderful format for recreation and offer a lot of diversity in terms of what they can support and who they can support. But when it comes right down to it, everybody wants optimal experience. And what that means is, you know, mountain bikers sometimes talk about the sense of flow, right? The synergistic sense of being where your ability rises to the challenge at hand and suddenly nothing else matters, right? Suddenly you're a fully actualized person. Life is great. <laughs> Trails can do that. I mean, trails have that amazing power. So um, that sort of flow state is, is really powerful, and it's a reason why a lot of people are drawn to trails as an experience provider. So different types of trails. We got pathways and roads, wider, great for socialization, great for walking side by side, that sort of stuff, great for newer people, great, we call them gateway trails. They provide safe uh, entry points into the sport and culture. You got traditional trails, people that just like things that are more like deer paths, rugged, really intimate nature experiences. People like foliage that rubs up against them kind of thing. <laughs> um, and then you got mountain bike optimized. These tend to be a little more sculpted, a little more uh, supportive for different types of things. Maybe they really help you rail a corner. Maybe they get your wheels off the ground, that kind of thing. Gravity trails, they can be chunky, they can be smooth. Um, and then bike parks. Bike parks come in a lot of different flavors. You know, you got things for tots, things that are really attractive and safe for kids that are getting into uh, the sport. And, you know, anything that you can do to make a nice entry point for kids nowadays to help with screen addiction and the nature deficit disorder, the Richard Louvre uh, book, um, pump tracks, all weather surfaces, these types of surfaces, they're fantastic for reducing maintenance burdens on recreation and park staff. Um, they help offer year-round type recreation by providing a durable surface that doesn't get marred from use when the surfaces are delicate. Um, and then bike parks can just, you know, they can grow and they can become more audacious. So, you know, some of the recommendations that will likely be made in the plan, some of them depending on um, uh, dialogue with the park staff and, and the recreation staff, you know, we're going to figure out what the, what the tolerance is for scope and scale. Some of them may be more audacious. Some of them may be more achievable at the grassroots level with working with groups like Grok. Um, but we'll see. You know, in order to get there, this is what we do. So it's a collaborative process of assessment, planning, and design in partnership with the town and local state stakeholders, community folks like you. Um, project preparation, we talk about goals and objectives, the area of interest, which uh, it's the south end primarily of Shadow Pines. And uh, we look at mapping data, which we've collected and started to look at the possibilities and other planning documents like the master plan and other transportation studies. Um, and then we start creating base maps, which we've done to go out and start doing field work. So we get out in the field with, with our smartphones and start collecting data and, and start to figure out what the possibilities are. Uh, we do events like these in order to make the public aware of what's going on, but also solicit input and perspective. Um, and so our f this is our first session, the January one, for public info and input. Uh, there's going to be a survey available till the end of the month, and this is a separate survey from the one that the town is administering, but it's one that we all hope that you support and help distribute. Um, there will be field work. There's a field work debrief and a presentation of some of the findings in just a couple weeks now. So we've got our work cut out for us to share some of the initial observations that we've been making. Um, and then in May, there will be a presentation of the draft report, and that will be available for comment. Um, so the field work, what we do is we go out and we evaluate the terrain. Uh, we identify points of interest and corridors for development. We're collecting geospatial data along the way in order to, to help support those recommendations. And then the, the plans developed. So that includes things like the background, the, which is the rationale, the existing conditions, recommendations, implementation info, and then help with prioritizing the steps. You know, talk about phasing and, and what do you want to do when and what do you have the, the, the budget and appetite for. Um, and, then, and then there are also some graphical maps that go along with it in order to help visualize everything. So the uh, field design layout portion, so this project is a provision for doing 
a certain amount of field work to do some layout to go mark things up out in the field so that when um, if an RFP is generated and then contractors are hired they've got some flag lines to follow in order for it to do the production work so uh, project life cycle so we are basically doing this upper third here so we're, we're going back through some of the feasibility stuff again to assess desire we're reassessing uh, the market because the technology has changed so quickly out there you know we've got e-technologies and they're going to be like i said this is uh we're going to be trying to think of all the other potential trail uses out there you got one wheels you got e-bikes you got all these other emergent technologies that um are going to help get people active right so you know how do we make um, confident and sound recommendations that support a variety of different uses but helpfully keep user conflict as low as possible you know because everybody wants to have fun out there right um, so participation what we're looking for tonight you're here to learn about the the project and the process to share your thoughts I invite you to come over to the boards and start to mark them up and then like I said beyond that um, you know the survey will be available um, and connect with other advocates so you know connect with the people that are here share hey how you doing you know what are you out for this is what I'm looking for that kind of stuff um, and then you know because you never know what kind of relationships are going to help support projects in the future as well as um, just getting to know some good people in this room so if you if you made time to come out to this room tonight you got to be pretty okay <laughs> so <laughs> um, so then after tonight yeah the survey is available and, and please help spread the word get the word out about this project because the more community support there is for this sort of stuff the more we prioritize things to get them done and maybe the more audacious ones right <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next session is going to be the 24th again that's some of the initial input input results because the survey runs till the end of February will kind of give you a sense of where things are headed uh, with the survey and then some of the initial field work observations. So like, what is the potential out there? What are some of the pitfalls? What are some of the challenges, you know? Um, so other than that, other opportunities, you know, please contact further. You can go to our website, shoot me an email. Um, and then if you'd like to arrange a site walk, you know, I'd be happy to get out there and walk around. You could, could show me some of the observations that you've had. Um, and then uh, in May, we're going to be doing a presentation of the draft report. And again, that'll be available for comment. And then the final report is going to be available for review as well. So there's my contact information. If, if you want to pull me aside, I've got some cards I can share. But I'd uh, love to talk trails with anybody. So um, great. Thank you. All right, so again, thank you everyone. Now's the time for our breakout sessions. Um, I did just wanna make a little point. Uh, I know a lot of this uh, project is mountain bike uh, focused, uh, but I certainly would be remiss if I didn't mention that. Uh, when I talked about before in terms of multi-use trails, this, this project is mountain bike focused, but I, I think a lot of the pieces that we're looking for our master plan is to say, e even though this is mountain bike specific, it, it's still gonna be for walkers and hikers. And when you look at that piece of the property is Shadow Pines that um, more of the designs will come out, um, it's a piece that really doesn't have any pathways on it yet. So uh, from my perspective, it's an opportunity uh, at some unexplored areas of its shadow pines for not just bikers, uh, for walkers as well. And uh, when it comes to uh, this project, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the different options and things that it makes grow in other parks and trails that we have to make them all multi-use. So uh, some of them that are at Harris Whalen and Rawfus that are uh, primarily walking ones, well, maybe this is the sort of project and the sort of discussion that the community has, the rec department parks has, uh, to really just start multi-use in general at all of our parks. How can we up update that again to serve as many people as possible in the community um, not just bikers not just walkers I think it, it happens in so many other communities and I know Adam would certainly be the one to, to talk to about it uh, but there's all these other bike parks uh, and other communities and I think this is a really great opportunity for Penfield uh, to kind of start on that next level of getting everyone out there at, at all of our different trails uh, not just this is a white a walking one and this is a biking so again I just want to put that tidbit out there. Uh, thank you to Adam 
uh, and to Chris and Cortland and our master plan committee. Um, at each of the tables, uh, you can break out, go and uh, provide as much input as possible. We're going to take the screen down up here. The master plan has uh, sheets that you can fill out and leave with us. There's going to be online surveys, but uh, don't hesitate to come up, uh, talk with us, because uh, we're interested in the information and the discussion. So uh, thank you for being in here. Uh, I know Adam said you're all awesome people. I'll reiterate that as well. So thank you so much.